Hey everybody, so I've always wanted to do one of these little cooking videos, so today I'm going to make a beef stew, and I'm not going to do everything step by step, I've done a lot of the prep work already, I know it's Fat Tuesday, you should probably cook something Cajun, but you know, I'm not going to. Um, so, here we got all of our ingredients, we got some, uh, some rutabaga, got some onion chopped up, carrot, celery, turnip in there and some mushrooms and you put cook all this over some rice and i got a chuck roast uh chuck roast is great for making a beef stew especially if you make it in a dutch oven and garlic um some people say that's cheating i don't care it tastes good can't tell the difference between that and real garlic when it's all done and said with i promise you anyone who says otherwise you're wrong Alright, I've cut up all my uh, chuck roast and I've let some salt sit on it a little bit. So we're going to start browning it. I'm going to take uh, my Dutch oven here, my cast iron pot. I'm going to heat up some avocado oil. Um, the stuff's great, tastes great, um, has a high flash point. Olive oil will turn into a carcinogen if it gets too hot, and, and this has more flavors, healthier for you than vegetable oil, canola oil, you name it. Some or coconut oil would be great, but it's still too sweet for what we're trying to get here today. All right, the uh, oil's getting nice and hot. You can tell that by it's starting to have a little exhaust come out, and so we're just gonna put the meat in there, and we're gonna let it. Uh, I'm going to brown it. I'm really just going to leave it alone and let it kind of cook real good here. I want it to create a nice little crust on the meat. And then when it's done, we'll uh, I'll actually take it out of the pot and drain it. But I'm going to add a couple things to it. Some uh, pepper. Um, just a couple things uh, to help give it some flavor while it cooks. Um, that will later go great in the final product. So uh, the meat is done browning. Okay, you can see there's a nice little crust on there somewhat. Um, got some black pepper cooked into it real nice. Uh, I have it sitting in a little colander. It's dripping some uh, the drippings out. I tried to get most of them out of the pan too. I'm going to add a half a stick of butter in there. And this is going to make a roux as a base. I'm going to melt the butter down and you know, I'm going to add some flour to it. I'm not very good at measuring anything. I just kind of do things and hope for the best. <laughs> it usually works out pretty good though. Um, usually the only complaints I get is from my kids being for something being too spicy. So we're going to let this butter melt. Then we're going to add some flour to it. I'm going to stir it up and we're going to let it cook. The trick to a good roux is you want it to be dark. Especially for something like a beef stew where it's a hearty meal, you want it to be a really dark, really burnt roux almost. You're just burning butter and flour. Some people prefer oil. I like butter. Um, and so, yeah, that's what we're going to do now. So I got the butter and the flour. And it's uh, mixed up. I added some garlic to it to flavor it up. And some of the crust, uh, the leftovers that cooked to the pan from the meat that was salted, had the pepper in it, that stuck to the bottom. That's going to add some flavor to the roux. So it's just not flour and butter. Um, and of course, everything else, when we get it added later on, it's going to add some quite a bit of flavor to it. Uh, yeah, I've never made a video like this before, so... Uh, a little awkward talking to a camera while I'm cooking because I don't usually explain shit to anyone I just kind of do it um, I'm gonna get a little ahead of myself but as this roux cooks and it kind of darkens up here it's gonna cook probably take about 30 minutes to really get good and dark um, and I have my oven or my stove here at a uh, medium heat it's another thing I'm still kind of learning this one uh, I'm used to cooking on gas, and I, I like gas a lot better, but once this starts uh, getting dark and I cooked a little bit, um, I might add it a little more, 
some more flour than I wanted to, so I might add a little bit more butter here. Um, I'm going to use Guinness to start thinning it out and making kind of a gravy with it. I really don't like to drink Guinness. I know when it's a novelty to a lot of people. I hate it, but I love to cook with it. It's great, especially, you know, shepherd's pie, beef stews, anything with beef, anything that's hearty. I love malty beverages. Don't cook with wine a lot. Um, whiskey a little bit, but uh, Guinness, yeah, that's, the, that's good, the good stuff. All right, so the roux's been cooking, and it's gotten really dark. It's about what I want. That's usually what I'm looking for. Um, I did add some garlic in there. I don't know if I mentioned that earlier. Kind of, you cook the garlic in with the roux. Kind of gives it a uh, roasted garlic uh, taste. I just like it a little bit better um, cooking it with everything else. So what we're going to do now with the roux is I'm stirring it real well. We're going to add a little bit at a time of the Guinness. Um, see, it's going to kind of fizz up right here, but you only want to add a little bit of time because butter, you know, which is animal fat, is like oil and you want it to be able to accept it all. And if you put it in too much, it sometimes will separate. Um, Florida, we got to be careful with, like the humidity can play tricks on us too when cooking things. Um, not as bad as when you make like divinity or something but um so just a little bit at a time and you stir a little bit at a time and you stir what i do is i'm going to make this that root come is a base and it makes a great gravy and it looks really dark and it smells like it's burnt and i promise you that it's not um because it's gonna you know guinness is also dark um but what it's going to do is when it's all done said with, I'm going to pour it all over top of the uh, all the ingredients in the Dutch oven here right before I stick it in the oven to cook for several hours. So what we're doing is we're just making sure that we're getting the Guinness worked in there real nice. We want that nice thick gravy. Um... I'm gonna add a few things to it. Um, this isn't an Italian dish. A little bit of oregano and a little bit of basil go really great in it. And looks like I need to add, open up the oregano, so I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm gonna add some oregano. I'm doing that with my left hand there. So it's like my retard hand. And I'm gonna add some basil to it. And you know, I don't know if anyone's ever done this with an iPhone before, any of y'all have, but holding an iPhone and trying to do things that you're used to doing with two hands is uh <laughs> it's different. So I'm gonna stir that in there. I'm also gonna add just a touch of red pepper. Um see, not not a whole lot, just just a touch, um, just to really, just to give it a little zing later on. My kids will probably complain about it, but I swear they tell me it was spicy no matter what, so they could get, say they're done, get up off the dinner table, but <laughs> that's my children. I'm going to let that cook a little bit more, and I'm going to grab a bowl. I'm going to pour that actually out of the Dutch oven. I'm going to add all this stuff in there. So the meat, the meat and the mushrooms, the rutabaga, the turnips, carrots, celery, the onion, all that good stuff. Um, love root vegetables. Um, and the rutabaga is one of my favorites. And... It's a great alternative to potatoes for some of y'all who are trying to cut down on carbs. I'm not trying to cut down on carbs, even though I should. I just, I just like it. So, <laughs> all right, all right. So I'm gonna add everything to the pot here. Meat. And, and the rotabaga. 
trying to do this with one hand, so I'm holding this camera. Trying to put a paper plate down on my hot stove. Add some onion to that. Um, some meals I cook, I'll actually cook in that roux once I add the Guinness and thin it out. I actually put the onions in and cook them in that. I don't do that with this. I let it cook like everything else. Um, couldn't tell you why, just kind of how I do things. Looks like I probably had a little bit too much rutabaga there. Oh well. So, one thing you can do if you don't have a huge Dutch oven, like I don't, um, and you run out of space, or if you just don't have a Dutch oven at all, you can cook all that in a pot. You make your roux the same. It's not gonna change anything. And then I take a crock pot base, or the, not the base, the crock pot itself, put all the crap in there, coat with tinfoil, works the same. So, and basically what I'm gonna do now, because um, I add the add the mushrooms to it, and you know I've already put everything in here. I'm not going to dirty something else up. I'm going to end up just putting this on there. Actually, I think I am going to have to put it in a crock pot instead of that, which kind of irritates me a bit. But you know, oh well, that's my own fault. Got too big of a rutabaga. Um, but yeah, we're just gonna transfer in that, and then we'll pour the roux, the gravy on top of that, and it's not much. It doesn't really amount to a hill of beans, really. But I just like to use everything, so I'm gonna put that on top of it, and then I'm gonna put it in the oven at 300 degrees for, I don't know, it's one o'clock now, so I'll probably pull it out somewhere around six, maybe uh, maybe 6.30. Let it sit for 30, 45 minutes, make some rice. I'm gonna throw the rice on top of, uh, or in a bowl, and then this on top of the rice, and it's gonna be delicious. And I will show you all the final product. Um, if y'all like this video, you wanna try it, um, you can PM me or private message me for, uh, a recipe, I'll try to put it down on paper. Like I said, I just kind of make shit up as I go. I always have. I don't really measure anything. It just kind of works out and um, nobody really taught me anything specifically. Um, I've watched a couple cooking shows before, but I read a lot of things, uh, different cookbooks, different ways of doing things and kind of come up with my own shit. So um, yeah. So if y'all want to try this, I hope you like it. Sorry, I probably wasn't very entertaining. Um, first time doing this. I promise uh, doing it in the future, I'll get better. Uh, y'all have a great day. And uh, next time you see me, uh, when I come back, I'll be eating this stuff. Hey, one more thing. Play around with this. Make this your own. Um, like I said, this is something I kind of came up with from other things that I stole from different places reading about, but uh, you know, be, could be everyone's taste is different. Uh, I love mushrooms. I like to eat them whole. I cut everything really big and chunky because that's how I like my beef stew. Um, some people like it more like a soup, so don't be afraid to add some beef broth to it uh, if you want to, or when you go to brown your meat, add a little bit more oil than I did. Um, to it and get it hot because it'll just it'll draw out more fat you'll have more liquid to work with more drippings um, there's all sorts of things you can do this is how I do it it always turns out great my family loves it but uh, that doesn't make it the right way or the wrong way so uh, one thing I do when I cook and I absolutely love to cook is I have fun with it I drink I uh, usually listen to inappropriate music um, if my kids aren't around um, I say foul language, I use foul language no matter what. Um, been trying to kind of keep it to a minimum on th these videos because I know if y'all are watching this and your kids are around, you don't want to hear a bunch of nonsense. Just like I don't want my kids exposed to it. So um, yeah, I hope you like it and we'll see a final product here in a little bit.
By the way, I did add this to the crock pot base and I'm gonna cover it with tin foil. Hey, one more thing, play around with this, make this your own. Um, like I said, this is something I kind of came up with from other things that I stole from different places reading about, but uh, you know, be, could be everyone's taste is different. Uh, I love mushrooms. I like to eat them whole. I cut everything really big and chunky because that's how I like my beef stew. Um, some people like it more like a soup, so don't be afraid to add some beef broth to it uh, if you want to, or when you go to brown your meat, add a little bit more oil than I did um, to it and get it hot because it'll just it'll draw out more fat. You'll have more liquid to work with, more drippings. Um, there's all sorts of things you can do. This is how I do it. It always turns out great. My family loves it, but uh, that doesn't make it the right way or the wrong way. So uh, one thing I do when I cook, and I absolutely love to cook, is I have fun with it. I drink. I uh, usually listen to inappropriate music. Um, if my kids aren't around, um, I say foul language. I use foul language no matter what. Um, been trying to kind of keep it to a minimum on th these videos because I know if y'all are watching this and your kids are around, you don't want to hear a bunch of nonsense. Just like I don't want my kids exposed to it. So, um, yeah, I hope you like it and we'll see a final product here in a little bit. By the way, I did add this to the crock pot base and I'm going to cover it with tin foil. So here we are. That's the final product. We've got a nice hearty beef stew. Got some rice cooking in the pot, and we're just about five or so minutes away from being able to enjoy this delicious supper. All right, it's all served, and we're ready to eat.